good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to The Table. Today we are going to talk to each other again. We've done this before. We've, we've talked to each other many times. We, we have talked to each other a lot. And we are going to deliberately, we're not going to try to be clear, to be understood. We're just going to talk to each other. As, if, as though we are in the pub. Normal. Just how I would talk to you normally. How we are, yeah. Because you need to be able to understand native speakers when they're not yeah. trying to be understood. So good luck, and we'll see you at the other end. Enjoy the conversation. Hello, hello. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. You having a good Saturday? We've been busy. I'm very busy. What have we been doing? We have been filming videos many videos many videos today this is the last one of the day isn't it this is the last one of the day which is good because we're tired so i feel like my voice is going to be barely comprehensible (laughs) because when i get tired i get really um, mumbly slurry and mumbly don't i so this is going to be a really good practice to listen to people who are tired because sometimes people are tired we're not always up for it you know what i mean sometimes people are tired kind of i suppose how do you how do you get when you're tired I think things bother me when I'm tired. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like things irritable. Um, yeah, things uh, things get on top of me quite a lot. So like, if I even just something simple, mm. such as taking the bins out. Yeah. I will usually if I'm if I'm awake taking the bins out. It's quite simple. Just <laughs> take the bins out. You know. <laughs> but little things annoy me when I'm tired. I think. Mm. Yeah, I think that's normal. I think most people, when they're when they're tired, they get more more on edge. But I think for me, I just shut down a bit. Like if I'm with people, and if it's been a long day, and if I'm tired, I just decide I'm out now. Sorry. And I just, you're, yeah, you're not very good. I'll just uh, switch. Up. Yeah, you. Yeah, that is you. To be honest. I know. I just I can't do it. If I'm tired and if I want to go to bed, I can't bring myself to like find some energy. I just can't get it from anywhere. I'm like. You did that in the day. Do you remember? Yeah. It in the, London. Yeah. Was it in London? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. on the last Friday night. It was night. only like 11, and I was like, I'm zoned out. It was not even there. I think it was like 10, 10 o'clock you were already. You looked exhausted. You looked knackered. You were like... I do get very easily tired. It's just... It's, um, do you think that's getting old? Probably. I'm not saying that you are getting old. Getting older. Yeah, probably. And no, I think I've always been like that. I think I like to give people the best version of myself, and like I like to be present in the moment. If I'm too tired, can't be present in the moment. Can't give you the best version of myself, so I might as well just go to bed. I'm done. I'm like a like a like a. You used to do that in a nightclub. Oh yeah, I did. If I went clubbing, and this, <laughs> if we went clubbing, we're out dancing, having a good time with a group of friends, and then I would suddenly decide I'd be in the middle of like, literally mid song. I'd be like. Mm, 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 mm. I'm tired now and I just go home and I yeah. wouldn't tell anyone because I, w- I would have had a few drinks so I I wasn't thinking clearly enough to send a message you were, to yeah, people you and go, straight. guys I'm, I'm going to go or like so my friends would just text me going like Laura where are you we can't find you in the club and I'm like oh I'm home I'm in bed I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm in bed and I just walk myself home which is very dangerous I just walk myself home it wasn't far home. though no it wasn't far it was about a 20 minute walk was so it? I, would, I don't know if it was a 20 minute walk yeah from like um, in Concert Square? Yeah, in Liverpool. This is Liverpool, by the way, we're talking about, because we used to go 20 to... 20 minutes? Yeah. 20 minutes? If you're drunk, it's 20 minutes. Stumbling. Yeah. But, um, I and know. I just walk myself home. Like I, And I think that's my drunk self being my most true self. <laughs> and that's me deciding. If if social norms weren't a thing, I would just leave places without any uh, warnings. Like, it's like, like now? Yeah. It's like I've zoned out. It's, I'm a bit like a, a machine. You can charge me up. Like I get charged. And you up. just decide. If the battery's dead, you can't bring me back to life unless you charge me. That's so I need it. to go to sleep. What when when during the week are you the most tired? Um Don't worry about don't worry about the dust. Sorry, yeah, there's there. dust on the desk. Yeah, don't worry, I don't want the noise on the podcast. Um What when are you most tired during the Friday week? Friday afternoon after lunch. One hundred percent. Yes. That's when I'm the most because it's so close to the weekend and you've got a bit more work yeah. to do. If you're, if you're one of Laura's students on a Friday afternoon... Don't book me on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> no, no, I don't say that. No, I'm very professional and I'm very good and I will give you exactly the same lesson as if you booked me on a Monday morning. But um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm probably the most tired on a Friday afternoon. What about you? When are you the most tired? Probably a Sunday... A Sunday... Um, Sunday afternoon. Mm. Or... Uh, yeah, probably Sunday afternoon because 
I think what energizes me is the next day and like so friday mm. yes traditionally most people are tired on a friday afternoon and i do get tired mm. on a friday afternoon, don't get me wrong but i think i've got the weekend ahead usually i've got something quite nice to do on the saturday or the friday evening um and that gives me energy then but on a sunday it just feels like a sunday and then yeah it's a different tired though sunday's quite a nice tired sunday's like oh i don't know i don't know i prefer the tired on a friday do you Definitely. you feel completed you feel like well and also saturday. also it's like okay well i'm tired so, but then, so I need to have a long sleep tonight, but yeah. then it doesn't matter because it's a Saturday. Where oh, <laughs> go on in, nice. But on a Sunday, if I'm tired and I'm thinking, oh, well, I have to get up tomorrow, mm. it's a Monday, I have lots of things to do, lots of responsibilities to do. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree, I agree. Should we answer some of the questions? I have a question here, We're Laura. going back to our, run, our random, 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 going back to our random question generator to find some uh, questions so that we can keep asking some spicy questions. This is an interesting question. Go for it. What little thing do you do that you don't think many people notice? I could answer this. No, because you everyone notices. Do they? Go on. Let me bite in my fingers. Yeah, chewing your fingernails. Yeah, I do that all the time. But no, no time. one who watches the videos would know I do that. Because I would never do it in a video, but I'm awful. I don't know. Let's see if you do it today or something. It's. Ter- I mean, underneath the table, I've been picking. I'm a. I'm a nail picker. I and it's disgusting because I don't just pick the nails. I pick the skin. Yeah. I'm picking all the skin. That's me. Oh, no. I think people notice that though. Oh yeah. People do notice that, that oh, yeah. a lot. Oh, obviously, if I'm sat like this. Like, yeah, yeah, which you do. <laughs> I know it's a habit. Um, some little something idea. that you don't know that you people don't, know. Uh, people don't notice. Rubbing your feet, you do that a lot. Oh yeah, I rub my feet together. Like if I'm relaxing, I'll just rub my feet together. Which is what your mum does. Yeah, turn it into a mother. Everyone turns into their mother. Not my mother. Everyone turns into their own mother. Not yeah, everyone not turns everybody into turns my into mom. your mum. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what's something you do that I don't know? Not many people. Um, do. Little things. I don't know. I'm trying to think now. Oh, you do, I, you do this a lot with your beard. I, I used to. I used to do that when I, when I was new to the beard world. <laughs> I used to go, oh, yeah, that's interesting. I used to do this a lot. But I don't do that, not now. I sit like this sometimes. And whenever I sit like this or with my hand on my head like this... I'm turning it to my dad. I think I turn to my dad because my dad sits like this. Yeah. So I stop. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it funny how people just like like they feel themselves turning into their parent? And, and like, you but could, why? But you could have the most wonderful parent in the world. It's not about like I don't want to be my parent. I think it's just the that realization. Yeah. Of, Am I getting old? But did people in the past used to do that? Um, because I, I I feel like in the past when when life did not change as quick. So now mm. this is a big this is a bigger thing. But maybe one of the reasons why we are afraid of changing into our parents mm. is because our parents are from the past oh, of course generation, to yeah. a different generation mm. whereas in the 1500s mm. uh, a little boy being born would have had the same life That's as true. his grandfather so they're just like yeah of course I'm, this is just this isn't what my granddad does mm. this is just what people do do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Whereas now, like we we are we are like no 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 we're not like them we're not like the past we're not like the people in the past. Yeah. So do, 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 do yeah, because generational differences are massive now. So like if you're if you're doing something that's associated with a different generation that's like a lot older than you, it's like well I'm acting so like someone who's thirty years older than no, me. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. We've changed so much. I don't want to sit like this because I think well that's my how my dad sits yeah. and and yeah. it's not any insult on our parents. We love our parents. We think they're great yeah. people, but it's not that I don't want to turn into. My parent who's a great person i don't want to turn into someone who's 60 years old yeah <laughs> like that's what i don't want to be so that yeah so um but i don't think you do many things you don't have many little quirks no you don't you're one of those people you don't have weird little habits you, you're that, pretty... is that a good thing I, yeah i think i don't know it's just odd it's not as interesting <laughs> is most, it most people have little quirks that they do you you've got more mental quirks than physical quirks Yes, I do have some mental things. You like, have, like you, you love routine, and if something goes out of routine, I, that's a new thing though since COVID. Mm. I think definitely since COVID. But then again, before COVID, I was at university and I had a schedule anyway at mm. university. Mm. And then before university, I had high school. So maybe I've always had a routine, and maybe as an adult, I've gone, I need okay, routine. I need a routine. Yeah. Maybe. You love a routine. So I think maybe something that people wouldn't know about you is that you love to plan things and you've got a full calendar of like everything i could do a calendar right there and you've written down everything that we're going to do like oh, on my film we're going to watch on my phone i've written down i've written down set up podcast 
like set you've, up you've for written this. Down everything you have to yeah. do to the detail. But it's like my diary mm. in a way as well. So I'll go back, yeah, and find. And I don't something. think many people. Because I think a lot of people think you're very laid back and chill and like go with the flow bit. But, but you're not. <laughs> but I'm. But I. I arrange nice things to do so then I can do the nice things. I don't plan. So this afternoon I'm not like oh I got I need something to do I will. Um, do my taxes. I'm, mm. I've literally put in here, watch Coco, oh, we're gonna watch Coco the, the Pixar on, film, yeah. and cheese and crackers. <laughs> you know? Just, yeah, you it's nice, nice things. things. It's nice things. But because it's... otherwise, I wouldn't do those nice things. So I have a very nice life because I plan to do nice things. Quirks. There you go. That's What's my quirk. The next, uh, the next question here yeah, is... Um, oh, okay, there's an interesting question here. Okay. My earring's caught in my ear. Hold on. I mean, no, my ear's caught in my ear. Your hair is caught in your ear. No, oh. earring. Not in my oh, ear. Oh, earring. <laughs> it's like stuck. Okay, ear. this is interesting. How would you spend... How would you spend... We'll have to, we'll have to do different um, currencies here. How would you spend £1,000, which is... I don't know how many... $1,700, Something like that. Yeah, $1,600. $1,500, let's say. One thousand five hundred dollars yeah. to give the most happiness to the most number of people. Oh, yeah, I've heard that one before. I haven't. I, I, I asked no, I asked this to one of my students. They gave a really good answer, so I'm just going to nick their answer if that's all right. Um, they said I'm going to put on a good concert in an outdoor space. Put on a concert. Yeah. I know you can't probably... Yeah, Who? Actually, like, they're, they're a singer? No. Who are they going to get? Yeah, that's probably actually not a great concert. <laughs> Who would they get? You could get... You could, I think, if you didn't... If you've got, like, an acoustic group... For how much? No stage, how much would they charge? And a thousand, a thousand pounds. Okay. Wow, that's good money for them. To yeah. do a concert, they charge a grand. Okay. Let's find... Okay, let's find, like, a cool Irish folk band for, like, 500, 500 quid, right? And you get them in the middle of, like, a park, and the rest of the money could be for, like... Um, snacks to give out to people and snacks I think that's nice what could you make people happier with with only a thousand and you could loads of people could fill the park listen join in ding 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 ding. it'd be lovely how many people how are we we picturing as many as you want you could have like oh is it just free to enter yeah okay yes okay yeah I think that's a good show Uh, because I was going to say you could just give everybody ten pounds you could give like would that make them as happy as going to like a cool in the park in the summer Concert with a nice band with no. snacks. I don't think so. That's a good answer. Thank you. That's a good answer. I don't know what I I pr- probably do the same. Maybe book out like a like a cinema. Hmm. But then again, people can't really talk. I like the something the, the, in a the, village. So like in the middle of like a village where lots of people pass every single day. Could you build something for a thousand pounds that would bring like a nice statue that would bring happiness to people for years to come? If you could put. I don't know how much a statue costs. Probably more than a thousand five hundred pounds. Surely, it's a big rock. It's a massive rock. Have you made a statue before? Not made. Not out of. Um, not out. No. <laughs> no, I haven't. No, not out of. I have tampered with clay a little bit. You know, like a statue. <laughs> I've, I've dabbled with clay blue tap. a little You've bit. You've done a statue out of blue tack. Oh yeah. Of course I have. Iconic. When you're a kid and you didn't have anything to do, but you had some blue tack, you just sit there and you just make little men out of a uh, blue tack or women. Yeah, I that. yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, would you like another question? I'd love one. Uh, the next question is this. Oh wow, this is interesting. Um, what is your definition of success? I love this question. Has it changed over time? That's another little first. sub-question. I think definition of success is different for everybody, of course. Mm-hmm. So my definition of success is being happy day to day and not wishing for more things if that makes sense yeah. so if you're at a point in your life where you are not really striving for much more than mm. what you've got then that is success no matter what that is no matter what that is that could look like anything that could look like you live in a fishing hut and you go fishing every day and that's it oh, it yeah. doesn't have to be like big house and money it could just be whatever makes you happy I absolutely agree. definitely I agree I also think be not and it's very hard to achieve but it's, it's very warped towards my because how my life looks but for me i i want to be able to make be in complete control of my life so like and even down to things like when i work so the fact that we've been able to be successful in our job where we choose when to work 
I think that's a really good into like for me I feel very successful because that's what I want for me yeah me too so I feel successful in my goal and my goal is to be, have be complete control of my life and I feel like I am I feel like I'm completely in control of what I do when um, yeah and that's success for me but obviously if I wanted to be if my life passion was to be a doctor that yeah might, then I can't achieve that and be successful with it, but also have the complete control of my life because if you're a doctor, you've got to, you know, fulfill shifts and stuff. Do you think then in that case that people who set bigger targets mm. are sadder because you are, you're, you're probably never going to reach those goals or it's harder to reach those goals? Well, there's that idiom. Do you know what I mean? There's that idiom. If you reach for the moon... Can I guess? Go. If you reach for the moon, then at least you will leave the atmosphere something like that no kind of like if you if you reach for the moon please don't say you'll hit some stars yeah the stars are not the moon. it's not yeah it's not it's not, it's not it's i would say i would do the, the other round if you reach accurate. for the stars you might reach the moon or you might reach our yeah, star whoever invented this saying wasn't thinking about like, whoever invented this saying it wasn't, it's not nasa certified it's not like the nasa slogan <laughs> it's, it's just what people say it's just poetic all right I don't know. so the the phrase is if you reach for the moon, you'll probably find yourself among the stars. So unlikely, you might <laughs> very unlikely. You might not reach the main goal. Like if my goal was to be a billionaire, that's the moon, right? So I probably won't become a billionaire, but I might end up being a millionaire. Yeah, the which is the stars. <laughs> that's way further away. So I think I think it's good to have a good goal. I think you, you should ha- you should have a crazy goal, but you should be ready. You set a goal for this year. Yeah, I mean, like, when you said to me, you said, like, nice. how many subscribers do you want on this channel? I said, oh, well, let's go for 300,000. Why not? Because if I aim for, if I only aim for, like, 20,000 more than what I've got right now, then I'm not going to be working very hard for that. Because I'll be like, oh, it'll come, maybe. But if I aim for 300,000, I'm going to have to work harder for that. There so you I, go. So I might end up on 220. Which, which is, is better still than great, yeah. but it's better than just twenty more than that. Do you know what I mean? Like, because I've tried so hard to get that, you go higher. So I think you should set really crazy goals, but know in your head, I might, you know, it's okay if I don't get that. I'm not a failure. I don't know what I'm saying. No, no, no. I know. I agree. I agree. I don't know if the people who go who accept, I'm probably not going to hit it. Are the people who get success? I think that the successful people are the people who completely believe that that is what well, they I are going to achieve. I'm going to get ten million subscribers. Do you? No. <laughs> Ten million. Could you million. imagine? I don't know. Let's Watch them crop this video now when we do hit the 10 million. This is going to be the, the, the emotional little video that we'll play at the beginning of the thing. We'll go. Do you remember that? Or 300,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Yes. Let's do it. Um, let's do one more question. I think we've spoken for a while. Have we? I think so. I don't think we have. Okay, let's do two more questions. Two. I really don't think we've spoken for a long time at all. Do you not? No. The concept of time are different. I went to make this tea <laughs> at like quarter past five, I think. Okay, what time is it now? Half past five. Okay, cool. Okay, okay. I think we spoke for like ten minutes. Okay. I don't know. Uh, have we? I, I have know. no idea. I feel like I look like I'm dressed in some kind of cape. This black cape. Anyway, next question. Anyway, let's have a look <laughs> at this. Uh, so, um, okay, this is an interesting one. What's your plan for surviving a zombie invasion? <gasps> We've been watching The Last of Us, haven't we? The Last of Us. I, well, I've, I've played The Last of Us. Played? You couldn't get past it. You, you were stuck on a level for quite a while. I don't know if there are levels in video well, games you, anymore. I, when I saw you playing it, you could not get past those. Yeah, it was, hard. <laughs> um, it was really difficult. So The Last of Us is a TV show about um, a zombie apocalypse. So we've been watching that. And I said the other day to you, didn't I? I said, I think I'd be the worst person. Oh, you would be terrible. Oh, I'd be awful. Like, categorically bad. I'd be gone. Like, you know those... You know in a zombie apocalypse movie, there's that first scene where you where everything goes wrong. In normal life, normal life, then the zombies take over. You know those first people you see getting eaten? That's me. I'm not even making it past that first day that first hour I don't I don't know I'm if you would even get it. eaten you would just I just fall over fall over <laughs> twist your ankle yeah. catch so a I cold. have no plan because I'm not planning on making it past the first day what's your plan <laughs> can you give me a set scenario so the world like in The Last of Us the world's been taken over by like a fungus and people have like people eat you and stuff and you that you've been evacuated from your house and you're just on your own uh, where your am I am I in the countryside am you're I in the forest I would, I would go to the countryside yeah because there you can run in different directions. If something comes at you, you can run you in lots of different end. directions. Yeah. Um, I would... Ooh, 
I would. This is crazy. I would start <laughs> do a dance. building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would build tunnels. Um, so I would dip, go down, right? And then I was imagining being stuck in this hole and just and then they come, yeah, yeah. So no, I'd start making tunnels out. Start living in tunnels, maybe? Yeah. Does that makes sense? You could live in a tunnel, yeah. Start living underground. Yeah. So the zombies are on upground. Uh, upground. Upground. <laughs> They're overground. 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 And we are underground. I think that should happen anyway. That was one of my inventions. Living underground. Yeah. Houses that go down. I think they have started them. Have they? Yeah. Where? Uh, Denmark, know. probably. Yeah, probably. They always, they're always like ahead. Denmark, <laughs> Netherlands. Sweden, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. Would you help me if I, it was a zombie apocalypse and if I if I was to... Would you stay behind or would you run away and leave me to die? Of course I'd help you out. I need you for the views. <laughs> <laughs> you can smash the English with continuing the zombie apocalypse. Can you imagine? Smashing zombies. I'm smashing zombies. Okay, guys. So... <laughs> so, this zombie is um he's 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 what he wants to bite my arm yeah. now, the past tense of bite is not bited it's bit <laughs> here are 10 adjectives to describe a zombie ferocious ferocious Me. yeah hungry Hung- I'd, yeah. I'd be up for it if i had a signal or oh, we could start teaching the zombies <laughs> oh god <laughs> like okay now how to say brains Brains. Oh wow, yeah, that's a classic. I'm uh, in a zombie film. Oh yeah, Laura, tell this story. People don't know this. I am in a zombie film. Playing a... With Glenn Close, of all people. Yeah. So when I was younger, when I was about 17, there was a there was an advert in the paper. It sounds like I was born in the 50s. There was an advert in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> and Somebody so... ran down the... Does anybody want to be in one of those pictures? <laughs> one of those tackies. Um So there's an advert in the paper and someone took a picture of it and posted it on Facebook, um, in the local kind of Facebook page. Because it was in the lo- in my local newspaper in sort of the West Midlands, and it was we film the f- Hollywood a film Hollywood like the one Hol- person <laughs> <laughs> and the, the nativity Hollywood are coming Hollywood are coming Hollywood um, are <laughs> coming to film a zombie film where you live, which is always a great boost for in the, in the, yeah. the town that you. Grew They've up looked in. where in the UK could we? Where looks desolate enough to be convincing as England after a zombie apocalypse? Where you live? So yeah. they came to film it where I live, which is very funny. Um, and they said we need extras to be zombies. And I was like, I'm doing that. So I um, went to I, I sent my picture to the email address and they were like, Yeah you could be a zombie. Like who's that girl? She looks like a zombie. <laughs> and then um I went there and there were about two hundred of us and I had to have like you you sat down in front of this mirror and these makeup ladies just threw moss in your hair and like Moss. Yeah moss from real tree. moss. Real moss. In your hair. In my hair. Because we're extras, they don't care. They're just like, oh you know, whatever. We're not the actors. Did you, you know? get it washed out afterwards? No, I still have moss in my hair. <laughs> no uh, <laughs> No, they didn't wash no you, So you they, went home with moss in your hair? Yeah. So they oh my God. robbed moss in my hair. They like they got like um wet face paint of brown it just went in my face it just like made my face look like dirty. sprinkled it in your they face they got my teeth they blacked out my teeth Ugh. they put me with what cl- with um oh, I didn't ask um, they blacked out my teeth and then I had to go and the scene was that we had to be asleep zombies the film is called she who brings gifts or she who brings she who gifts. brings gifts or the girl with all the gifts i can never remember the name of the film but the girl like with this. all the gifts mm, i think it's she who brings gifts um and then um so the scene was we had to be asleep and when these zombies were asleep we were like this so we were asleep standing up like that you were dormant dormant zombies and then there was noise and we had to wake up <laughs> and we had to go <laughs> <laughs> like that like zombies and a little dog a real dog had to run and we had to chase What was the, the dog's dog. name again? Oggy. Oggy. And we had to chase the dog because we wanted to eat it. And so my entire scene was this dog and I had to go, <laughs> like chasing the dog because I wanted to eat it. And in the film, you can see me running past For like the a screen. second. For like a second, you can see me going, <laughs> So how long were you filming for? A, a whole day? day, yeah. And you're on it for, yeah, interesting. Yeah, What's like, the dog's name again? Oggy. Oggy? Yeah. But Glenn Close oh, was Oh, I was in trying it. to make a joke then. I was trying to get oh, you to say Oggy, Oggy, Oggy. Yeah, never mind. Go on. Glenn, Glenn Close was there. Glenn Close was in it and she was lovely and we were stood around and this is like Oscar winner Glenn Close. Before you said, before you told me this story, yeah. I thought Glenn Close was a man. Glenn. 
Glenn is a man's name and a woman's Glenda, name. Glenda. What's Glenn in short for? She's in English? Glenn. Glenn, okay. But anyway. Um, and uh, she came up to us and she was so lovely. And she was like, are you guys okay? Are you she American? Enough? No, she's from... Like, I don't know. I don't know where she's from. She's from. Um, and she was like, are you guys okay? Are you warm enough? Um, and we were like, yeah, we're okay. Thank you. Going close. And she was going close. It was amazing. So that was my zombie film experience. Some people from our uni was in... Um, they were in... That film with Ed Sheeran. Yesterday. No, last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it yesterday. was called Yesterday. Yeah. The Beatles one. It's fun being extra. Have you been an extra before? No. It's fun. I, I feel like an extra in this channel sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Here I am. He's a moss. <laughs> no. In what? In my hair? <laughs> <laughs> you should do it. We, we applied to be extras on this thing, but we haven't really done much, have we? I don't... It doesn't sound... It is Great. fun. It's quite fun. If you, it depends what you have to do because it, it's just like you feel like you're on a movie set. It's quite. You, know, you are on a movie set. Yeah, but it's something that you don't expect. Like when. What you, would you want to be a, an extra in? Peaky Blinders. Well, that's gone now. That, well, shit, that, a film. that ship has sailed. No, they're making a film. Are they? Mm-hmm. Are they mm-hmm. really? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm aware that your hand is blocking the mic, Laura. You're so technical. I am. Yeah. Um, Peaky Blinders. I'd love to be an extra. They don't call them extras now. They call them supporting artists. Do they? Yes. I thought supporting artists were the... No, the supporting actor. Mm -hmm. So supporting artist is what they call extras because they're not just extra people. They're like vital to the scene because if you don't have extras... Interesting. Exactly. Do you know anybody who was an extra in... uh, Sorry, supporting artist in in Piggy Binders? Yes, our friend Gavin. Oh, yeah. He went to university with a guy called Gavin. He's in the scene... Um, when they meet Alfie Solomon for the first time. Yeah, and, and he said that Tom Hardy was pretty crazy. Yeah, he said that Tom Hardy, every scene, did something completely different. So, like, <laughs> you'd have the scene with the look, and he would just change the lines, he would do different words, he would do something random, like, he'd go, yeah. like, this is <laughs> crazy. I don't know what Tom Hardy sounds like in that, I can't remember. He shows, like, sort of... He talks a little bit like his dummy. Like that? So, yeah. Is that all right? Or is that Arthur? Tommy! Tommy! I think that's a good Arthur. That's a good Arthur. Give me something to say as Arthur. Is a, um. Uh, it's all in my head, Tommy. It's all in my head, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? Yeah. That's really good. Tommy, it's all in my head, Tommy. I can't. I can't bear it anymore, Tommy. <laughs> Go get Paul! <laughs> that's actually really good. That's really that's good. good. Give me another character. Um. Polly Shelby. Oh yeah, I can do this one. <laughs> There's gonna be a war on in this family, Tommy. Wow, it's like just in the room. <laughs> oh yeah. Right, one more question. Let's see. One more question. One. A quick, quick question. Here we go. We'll finish off. I'm sure okay. Everyone is. I was there. One question dinner? here. What's? Oh, here we go. What's the worst piece of advice you've ever got from someone? Do you ever have a bad piece of advice? Somebody said to me once, like, just go for everything. Go for every opportunity. Mm. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> there are some opportunities that are good and some opportunities that are bad. I've got an easier question for you, Laura. Have you the best piece of advice? The best? Go on. What's yeah. the best piece of advice you've ever got? You better have an answer now. It was you... from Bill Nye. It wasn't from Glenn Oscar, Close. No, the Oscar-nominated actor who came to our school who yeah. came to and to do a talk. He was amazing. He's one of the best talks I've ever heard. And he said, don't trust a reputation. Let them prove it for themselves. And I love that. I thought it was great. And I had so many instances after that of like, you're so right. Because I remember we'd work with some, you know, directors at university doing acting. And they would, there'd be all this talk about them beforehand. Like, yeah, well, they are very good. You know, they've done very this. Very prestigious. They've done this. They've done this. And everyone would just come to it with this attitude of like, no matter what that guy says, he's God. He's king because of the reputation and what he's done. Yeah. But then sometimes they might be terrible people. They might ask you to do things that are really not right or whatever. Um, or like... I had it with an agency once, an acting agency who had like, you know, very prestigious and, you know, they had all these people on their, on their books and they represented some big actors. And then I went and they, they, they cancelled they cancelled five minutes before I, I was outside the door. And really? Said, yeah. I was literally there. They went, no, we can't do it. Sorry. 
we've had you know another actor come in that we've had to talk to and blah 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 and then we rescheduled it i came back to london again and they cancelled on me again and they knew i was traveling far away like it took me two and a half hours to get yeah, there you're I spent, like, to london. 50 quid on the train and they cancelled on me when i was there again i just thought you know i don't care what reputation you have i don't care well that's the reputation they've got for you well yeah because it's like you you prove that reputation to me because I'm not just going to trust what everyone says. I want to see it. If you're if you're a bad person or you do something bad, I don't care what your reputation is. Um, um, that's how I view you now. What about you? What's the best piece of advice you've ever got? I don't know about advice, but I there was a football player who died recently. Mm-hmm. Um, you were about to make a joke then, and yeah, he's dead. Um, you were you were going to make a joke about I football player? Wasn't. Oh, you weren't okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know his name. <laughs> um, no, he he was that he was a uh, he was like an Italian Viali or something like that. Mm-hmm. Do we need to look it up or not? No, it's okay. Um, he was he was the assistant manager, I think, or one of the coaches for Italy recently when they won the Euros. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he died, and there was like a little clip of him on the telly. Yeah, and he was speaking about football. And when he was a player, his attitude was this, that you either, you never lose in football, you either win or you learn. Mm, that's good. And, and, and I think you can take that to lots, that's to good. anything in life. Mm. You either win or you learn. Love that. That's great. I think that's really good. And on that note. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up this guy's name just because he, I, deserves, I just, to he be, deserves to be named. He's named. You know, he's passed that's away. That's good that. If you don't win, uh, you learn. I like that. I can't remember. Like, even when we play chess together, every time I lose, I'm learning. That's true. That's true, which is a lot. I did beat but you. You did beat me since the last, uh, since the last... last time we did this conversation. Yes, yeah. Uh, Gianluca Viali. Okay, well, thank you, Gianluca Viali. And thank you, everybody, for watching. That's been a fun conversation. It was a very nice conversation. Lovely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll see you downstairs. <laughs> I'll see you right now, to be honest, because we're here. <laughs> Thank you Let's so watch, much for uh, joining us. We're going to watch Coco we now. We are going to watch Coco. We're going to watch the Disney film Coco. So thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this, press... Where are we going to put it? Let's put it there. Press subscribe. Press subscribe here. There. Um, yes. English learning. Anything you want. Bear in mind that we are trying to get to how much? 300,000 subscribers. 3 million subscribers by the end of this year. Well done for Um, coming. Oh, by the way, the Instagram is here if you want to have a look at that. Um, We have our own little theoretical questions on there, Thursday thoughts on there. Um, And if you want to learn some more, we've got Sunday slang. We've got lots of little things on the Instagram. So, yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Bye. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.